My name is Father Dominic Allain, a priest of the Archdiocese of Southwark and the international pastoral director of the healing program named Grief to Grace. The law of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted, it gives wisdom to the simple. Thus begins our responsorial psalm for today, the third Sunday of Lent. I wonder if this statement resonates with our own emotional experience of what we feel the law of the Lord is, with our own experience of being told that something we're doing is sinful. I wonder, particularly as we hear the first reading at today's Mass, with its recitation of the Ten Commandments, whether the first reaction we have is one of the sweetness and refreshment, of freedom and wisdom which leads the psalmist to speak about the law of the Lord in such positive, happy terms. Indeed, I wonder whether, whilst we accept the need for Lenten discipline, whether we regard this as something positive and life-giving, or whether in fact there's a little part of us which still sees it as slightly punitive, albeit salutary and necessary, a bit like a visit to the dental hygienist. That is, I accept it's for my own good, but hardly something about which I can get sufficiently excited or motivated as to go looking for it. There is an interview with the English comedian and satirist Peter Cook, in which he says in one of his funny voices, my mother was very religious. In the beginning was the word, and the word was don't. I've heard it said that young people are falling away from their adherence to traditional Christian practice and morality in the West, because when it comes to the Catholic faith, they only hear our no. The thou shalt not is their mistaken idea about what characterizes our religious observance. To a certain modern mindset, there is an inherent tension between law and freedom. Freedom is understood as being the absence of any external restriction. Freedom is freedom of choice, meaning that choice has become a value, a law one might say in itself, detached from any reference to what it is I choose. Modern morality, in the sense, for example, that people speak of being pro-choice in relation to an issue like abortion, recognises no law except the choice itself. This is an entirely arbitrary and false kind of freedom. Freedom does not consist in unlimited possibility to make a choice, but in an unswerving commitment to what is good, true, what is full of love. In modern times, distorted notions of freedom originate from a rejection of the notion of authority. In the ideas of Freud or Nietzsche, the healthy man psychologically is the one who has to kill the father or the authority in order to become himself, in order to become ubermensch, a superman who resists any restrictions placed on him. And we see the outcome of such philosophies in the totalitarian regimes of the 20th century. The absence of any restriction the rejection of any higher divine law does not result in the elevation of man, but in his hideous domination of some by others, a kind of kill or be killed. The first thing the scriptures reveal today then is how badly we misunderstand law in relation to the truth about God and his plan for us, but also how badly we misunderstand divine law in relation to real human freedom and thriving. The psalmist is clear that far from being restricted by being given a law, man is actually blessed. So I want to concentrate much of our reflection for this third Sunday of Lent on the Old Testament reading. This is in part because in a world and even in a church in which the authority of morality is in crisis, we need to recover the content of what we call the Ten Commandments as the basis for all authentic morality. We need to enter into that mindset of the psalmist who says that the law of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. If we cannot understand why this is, then in fact we will not understand what it is that Christ has done for us in his Paschal mystery. We will end up with a very simplistic and mistaken opposition between the Old Testament and the New, in which one is about laws and commandments, with a kind of inbuilt bias towards Pharisaism and rigidity, and the other is all about freedom from rules and God loving us so much he doesn't care what we actually do as long as we basically have a desire to be a good person. In such a caricature, the Old Testament apparently requires nature to be regulated, whereas in the New Testament, grace 
simply converts anything wrong to make it all right in the end if I basically have the desire to be a good person. And I think that a focus on the Old Testament is extremely important in the context of our own Lenten journey. Because Lent, and indeed Easter itself, will be more vividly understood and interiorised by us if we better understand the Old Testament. Why? Well, the paradigm for Lent, the source of this liturgical season of 40 days, is of course Jesus' own 40 days in the wilderness. But in that experience of 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus himself was remembering and recapitulating the formative experiences of the people of Israel who spent 40 years in the wilderness, in between leaving the slavery of Egypt and entering the Promised Land. Let's pause here and return in a few moments to reflect on the Gospel for this Sunday of Lent. Welcome back to our Lenten Reflection for this third Sunday of Lent. A wonderful book by Pope Benedict XVI of Blessed Memory called The Spirit of the Liturgy has been very helpful in my own understanding of this whole desert experience of Israel. Hitherto, I think it was easy to simplify Israel's 40 years in the wilderness as the equivalent of a sort of layover on a long-haul flight. Yes, there's a delay reaching the destination, but this is just a kind of interruption in the journey to the Promised Land. Actually, the idea that Israel simply escapes Egypt and then heads for the Promised Land in a straight line really does no justice at all to the sacred history which gives us our matrix for 40 days of Lent. For a start, as Pope Benedict points out, the explicit reason for the Israelites to journey into the desert is not, in fact, the journey to the Promised Land. The command to Pharaoh is, in fact, let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. This simple fact revolutionises the whole understanding of the events of the Exodus. Israel is led into the desert for a deeper encounter with the living God. She's saved from slavery in Egypt to become the chosen people, freed from a toxic, exploitive relationship with an authority in love with its own power to dominate, freed for a betrothal to the All-Holy, who has heard their cries and has been moved by love for them, who has taken the initiative and chosen to free this people so they can enter into the blessings of his love. At Sinai he offers them a covenant and in response to the revelation of his holiness they worship him. This should always be man's response to the revelation of God's loving choice. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, we say in our preface. But just as worship is a fitting response to the revelation of God's holiness, there is a second response, which is what Pope Benedict calls liturgy of life. It is a moral response to the Lord's loving initiative. What is that initiative? I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, we hear in our first reading. I had a wonderful Old Testament professor when I was at the seminary who said that to understand this Exodus reading properly, we needed only to understand that the word therefore is implied by this text. I am the Lord your God, therefore you shall have no other gods but me, etc. The commandments are not the condition for the covenant to be given. They are the consequence of the covenant having been given. Just as God reveals in detail how Israel is to offer worship in freedom, so he also reveals how Israel is to live in freedom. Origen puts it thus, Since there was a passing from the paradise of freedom to the slavery of the world as punishment for sin, the first phase of the Decalogue, the first word of God's commandments, bears on freedom. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The commandments which follow express the implications of this belonging to God by virtue of his choice and his gift of the covenant. 
In fact, Scripture doesn't refer to them as the Ten Commandments anywhere. The Hebrew expression is the Debarim Yahweh, the Ten Words, or Decalogue in Greek. This is an important distinction. In biblical terms, the Word of God is something creative. It was by speaking a word that God created the heavens and the earth. So what we call the commandments are in fact creative words. They create a zone of freedom whereby the Israelites who have been offered a covenant can live it optimally. St. Irenaeus says that the commandments prescribe love towards God and justice towards my neighbour so that man would be neither unjust nor unworthy of God. What a gift. Through the commandments, he goes on, God prepared man to be his friend. This is why the Catechism tells us these commandments, far from being some imposition which limit man's freedom, are nothing less than the gift of God himself and his holy will. Because in making his will known, God reveals himself to his people. The commandments are a gift of love because they allow a people who were slaves and who had nothing to live according to the dignity of being a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a people set apart, as St. Peter will say. And they allow each of us that same dignity and possibility of being the friend of God. I said that I had to correct my own impression that the 40 years in the wilderness are not some indeterminate sort of transition, a kind of limbo between leaving slavery and taking possession of the promised land. In fact, they are the necessary preparation to understand what freedom is, whence it comes, what it is for, and how it is to be maintained. Pope Benedict writes that Israel is constituted as a holy people, not by some geographical or geopolitical reality, but by her response to this divine revelation, to which she must respond by right worship and what he calls liturgy of life, by living ethically. The promised land confers nothing on Israel which is not already implied in God's revelation of right worship and right living. Its purpose is as a place where these can be fully lived out and safeguarded. When Israel worships God as he wishes to be worshipped and lives the liturgy of life, she enters into a condition of which the promised land is an external expression. But in fact, without those things, the promised land is an indeterminate good. When Israel abandons right worship and living God's commandments, Israel will lose possession of the land to her enemies. When she carries the Ark of the Covenant containing those tablets of stone on which the ten words are written into a battle zone, this causes Israel's enemies to be defeated. The Ark gives off a power. The 40 years in the wilderness, then we can say, is where Israel begins to learn to handle freedom. This was by no means something straightforward. No sooner have they been taught to worship God and given the commandments, and they start worshipping a golden calf. No sooner have they encountered God at Sinai and been told the direction of their travel, some of them decide they will hair off to try and conquer the promised land straight away. Despite all the signs and wonders that God has worked, they soon start grumbling against him and complaining of their conditions. They even become nostalgic for slavery, recalling that at least in Egypt they had leeks and onions to eat. It is in the wilderness of the desert that they are invited to enter into a relationship of radical dependence on God's will. It is he who will direct their steps and see that they have all they need for that day. Freedom, then, consists in being led by God. It is to enter into a relationship of radical dependence on his providence for direction and nourishment. It is to believe that obedience to his will is far safer and more life-giving than seeking to make happiness and salvation according to my own will, in my own image. Freedom, we might say, is letting God be God and not relegating him to the status of a kind of backup or endorser for what I have decided is best for me. Freedom is allowing myself to be led at every turn, accepting my limitations. This took a lot of learning for Israel, as it does for us. After 40 years wandering in the desert, it was a different group of Israelites from the ones who left Egypt, who would finally enter the Promised Land. 
Even Moses did not reach it, although he was allowed to glimpse it. We've labored long on the commandments. What about the gospel for today? This dramatic display of Jesus' righteous anger shows us his zeal for the holiness of his father's house. In other words, Jesus is zealous that his father should be worshipped in a way which befits the holiness and the parameters for worship that the father has revealed. In this context, anger is a God-given passion which mobilizes Jesus to take action against injustice and something dangerous, the defilement of the sacred space which is the temple the most powerful symbol of God's dwelling among men for the Jews. The way the temple is being defiled is much like the worship of a golden calf, a refusal to worship what's been revealed and a self-referential attempt to make holiness serve one's own needs. To seek, to control and to manipulate it. What is Jesus' authority for taking control of this? It's the divine authority a new revelation of God's presence among men. Destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up, Jesus says. But he was speaking of the temple that was his body, St. John tells us. The whole history of God's revelation to Israel now finds its meaning and fulfillment in Jesus' paschal mystery. He alone fulfills the law perfectly. In perfect love and obedience to the Father, he will offer his human body up on the cross becoming the sacrificial victim whose eternal offering is now the basis of the covenant. A covenant not written on tablets of stone, but on the pierced heart of the Redeemer. All mankind's sin is atoned for by this fidelity, this radical dependence on the Father's will, and Jesus giving his human nature as the sacrifice offered on the cross that brings the life of the resurrection. The veil of the temple will be torn in two at the moment that Jesus dies on the cross, to show that the truest worship we can offer the Father is this sacrifice of Jesus. But there is no true worship which does not also imply liturgy of life. True worship is in spirit and in truth, so that I cannot claim to worship Jesus, participate in the Mass, receive him in Holy Communion, and then model my behaviour and my actions on something completely different. The more I come to understand that in baptism I was given the gift of a covenant with God, in Christ's blood, the more I must seek to live by that covenant, which means living as Christ did, in imitation of his human nature, by grace. I am to live in this mortal body in such a way as to make it please him who has united himself to this body through baptism, when I was baptized into his death and resurrection. So Lent must be much more than just a kind of personal spiritual muscle building. It's about learning that radical dependence on God by worshipping him in prayer and seeking to live my life according to his law at every moment and not just when it happens to suit me. It means also entering into that powerlessness of Jesus crucified so as to be raised up to newness of life with him. It's about cultivating a childlike dependence on God's promise that he has chosen me and saved me. And therefore, freedom and life are to be found only in being faithful to his covenant. This covenant is not written on tablets of stone, requiring certain prescribed limits on what I may do. It's in fact a law written on the pierced heart of Jesus, showing me that love has no limit. There is nothing God will not do to bring me to the promised land, which is the life of the Trinity. The law of the Lord is perfect, it does revive the soul, because the law of the Lord is love to the very end. Love is the fulfilment of the law. This is why I must uphold and obey it and take it into my own heart. Thank you for joining us. Please join us again next week as we continue our Lenten reflection on the fourth Sunday of Lent.
we will now say the rosary. And for those who are joining us online today, we will be reciting as part of our Friday Lenten devotions, the rosary of the seven sorrows of Our Lady. The more familiar sorrowful mysteries will be recited this afternoon as part of the afternoon devotions. For those who are less familiar with the Seven Sorrows Rosary, sometimes known as the Dolor Rosary, it consists of seven mysteries. Each mystery comprises one Our Father and seven Hail Marys. There is no Glory Be or Fatima prayer. The Rosary is concluded with three Hail Marys in remembrance of the tears Mary shed for her son's suffering, and to pray for true sorrow and a desire to model our lives on the example of Our Lady. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My God, I offer you this rosary for your glory, so I can honour your Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin, so I can share and meditate upon her suffering. Just as Mary accepted the total mystery of Christ into her life, so may we see in our sorrow, our fear and humiliation, a dim but real participation in his passion and death. Recalling that if we wish to follow him, we must take up our cross each day. I humbly beg you to give me true repentance for all my sins. Give me wisdom and humility so that I may receive all the indulgences contained in this prayer. Now our act of contrition. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins, because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. The first sorrow of Our Lady, the prophecy of Simeon. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, You see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The second sorrow of Our Lady, the flight into Egypt. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and escape into Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, because Herod intends to search for the child and do away with him. So Joseph got up, and taking the child and his mother with him, left that night for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod was dead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The third sorrow of Our Lady. The child Jesus is lost in the temple. They were overcome when they saw him, and his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me? he replied. Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The fourth sorrow of Our Lady. Our Lady meets Jesus carrying the cross. Large numbers of people followed him, and of women too, who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The fifth sorrow of Our Lady. Our Lady stands at the foot of the cross. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Sixth Sorrow of Our Lady our Lady receives the body of Jesus. Truly I have set my soul in silence and peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The seventh sorrow of Our Lady our Lady witnesses the burial of Jesus. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, this day's, our, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we now say three Hail Marys in honour of the tears Our Lady, Our Lady shed for her Son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we say, One Our Father, one Hail Mary, and one glory be, for the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for us, O most sorrowful Virgin, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Lord Jesus, we now implore, both for the present and for the hour of our death, the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, your mother, whose holy soul was pierced at the time of your passion by a sword of grief. Grant us this favor, O Savior of the world, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The word is made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady of Walsingham, St. Joseph, St. Felix. Welcome to the National Shrine and Basilica of Our Lady at Walsingham, uh, England's Nazareth. A uh, particular welcome to you on this feast day, uh, which we hold in this diocese of East Anglia of uh, St. Felix. Uh, so we bring all our intentions to the Mother of God uh, in this Mass today. And also welcome to you those who are watching on live stream and via radio. Thus says the Lord... My words which I have put into your mouth will remain forever on your lips and your gifts will be accepted on my altar. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who called Saint Felix 
to preach the gospel to the people of East Anglia, raise up, we pray, through his intercession, heralds of your kingdom, so that they may proclaim the unsearchable riches of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it. But as I have not, it is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this. In my preaching, to be able to offer the good news free and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. So though I am not a slave of any man, I have made myself the slave of everyone, so as to win as many as I could. For the weak, I made myself weak. I made myself all things to all men in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. O praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out out to the whole whole world, world, proclaim proclaim the the good good news. Strong is his love for us, he is faithful forever. Go out out to to the the whole world, world, proclaim proclaim the the good news. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself, and he has entrusted to us the news that they they are reconciled. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made a tour through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing all kinds of diseases and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected, like a sheep, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So it's good to have you here today. And uh, thank God we seem to have a little bit of sunshine as well, which is very appropriate uh, for our saint today, given that uh, Felix means... Uh, happy, uh, from the Latin for happy. In one of the parishes I've worked in, uh, there was a cat, uh, believe it or not, called Felix, and he looked just like Felix the cat. Um, I must say he was a very pleasant, genial cat, and he really lived up to his name and was a very reassuring presence in the presbytery. 
Um, at times when I was feeling very stressed, I just looked at him and immediately felt uh, relaxed and less stressed just looking at him. So our saint today, Felix of Burgundy, also known as Felix of Dunwich, was a saint and the first bishop of this kingdom of the East Angles, as it was called, and he's credited as the man who actually introduced uh, Christianity into this part of the world. Everything that we know about him, or pretty much everything we know about him, comes from St. Bede's famous uh, ecclesiastical history of the English peoples. And it's, he says, St. Bede says that St. Felix freed the whole of this kingdom from long-standing evil and unhappiness. Where did he come from? Well, the historians seem to think he came from what is now France, the kingdom of Burgundy, and may have been a priest at one of those monasteries in Francia founded by an Irish missionary, Columbanus. It's possible he may have been the Bishop of Chalon before being forced to seek refuge elsewhere. And Felix travelled from Canterbury, sorry, from Burgundy to Canterbury before being sent by Archbishop Honorius of Canterbury to Siegbert of East Anglia, who was the king at that time. And this was in the year about 630. He also travelled to a place called Babingley in Norfolk. Anyway, when, Sieg, uh, when Felix arrived in East Anglia, Sieg, Siegbert the king gave him a see at a place called Damoc, and we think this may have been uh, possibly at Walton, which is in Suffolk near Felixstowe, or maybe Dunwich in Suffolk. And what's also significant is that Felix established a school there, which still uh, flourishes to this day. Felix died on the 8th of March, 647, or possibly 648, having been a bishop for 17 years, and his relics were translated from Damoc to Soham Abbey and then to the Abbey at Ramsey. After his death, he was venerated as a saint, and many English churches are dedicated to him. Anyway, as I mentioned, his name means happy or lucky. How important it is to be happy. People spend a great deal of time, a great deal of money, searching for happiness. But we know that true happiness lies in the Lord alone, in Jesus Christ. And this was something that St Felix clearly understood, as indeed did St Paul, who we hear about in that reading. And the readings today are not following the Lenten readings, they are readings particularly suggested for this feast. That's why we break the cycle of readings uh, for today from the Lenten ones. But St Paul says, um, woe to me, Paul's ministry is not volunteer work, but a mission he received directly from Jesus Christ, as he says in Acts. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and sons of Israel that I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. That uh, is, is quite something and quite significant. Paul speaks of this, often referring to the thorn in his side. The responsibility on his shoulders is so great that it's a frightening prospect for him, this judgment that he feels is awaiting for him if he abandons particularly the God-given task that he's been given. That's taken from the, again, the Ignatius Catholic Study Bible. St. Felix, as you've heard, was very successful in his missionary efforts here in East Anglia. And what I think is important that his preaching had a practical effect or impact. In the Gospel today, we hear that Jesus had compassion for them. And that Greek word is very expressive. It means he was deeply moved when he saw them. And again, as the Ignatius Study Bible puts it, compassion is those needing spiritual and physical healing lie close to Jesus' heart. Something that we think about, particularly on Fridays, uh, particularly about his sacred heart, of course. 
And another commentary says, says this about this particular gospel passage. It says, Jesus was moved when he saw the people because their pastors, instead of guiding them and tending them, led them astray, behaving more like wolves than genuine shepherds of their flocks. I think it can be fair to be said, not all of our churches radiate joy at every single moment of the day, and there are many reasons for that. But you and I can do our bit by trying to be joyful witnesses to the Lord. Joy is contagious. It spreads in a good way. Again, if you want to see this in action, I would recommend go and see the Missionaries of Charity working in a soup kitchen. There you'll see uh, true joy. And this, the importance of being a joyful witness is something that Pope Francis talks about in his first encyclical, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. He says these words, very uh, striking words. I invite all Christians everywhere at this very moment to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ, or at least an openness to letting him encounter them. I ask all of you to do this unfailingly each day. No one should think that this invitation is not meant for him or her, since no one is excluded from the joy brought by the Lord. The Lord does not disappoint those who take this risk. Whenever we take a step towards Jesus, we come to realise that he is already there, waiting, us, waiting for us with open arms. So let's ask St Felix to give us some of that joy today. If it's helpful, think about Felix the cat, whatever is helpful. But thank also St Felix for preaching the gospel here in this part of, of the world. And we give and we pray particularly for our, the diocese in which we're in here, for the bishop, Bishop Peter, the priests, deacons, religious and laity of this diocese. St Felix, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant our supplication, we pray, Almighty God, that with these sacrificial offerings of your people, which we bring you in commemoration of blessed Felix, you may graciously mingle with the gifts of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saint Felix, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, 
to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me mystery of faith we proclaim therefore O Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your son our Lord we your servants and your holy people Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just a note about Holy Communion, if you're not Catholic or cannot receive communion for any other reason, you're welcome to come forward for a blessing if you cross your arms over your chest like so, I'll give you a blessing. If you're receiving communion on the tongue, uh, please open your mouth widely so I can place the sacred host onto your tongue. If you're receiving communion in the hand, uh, please consume uh, the host in front of me. Thank you very much.
Let us pray. As we rejoice at the feast day of blessed Felix, we have received the pledge of eternal redemption, O Lord, and we pray that it may be of help to us, both now and for the life to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you once again for uh, being at Mass today. And just a reminder that our Friday afternoon program uh, here today starts with the Jubilee prayer at 2 p.m., which will then be followed by a period of uh, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament until 2.45 p.m., when we'll con- conclude that time with benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. And at 3 p.m., we have the Stations of the Cross here in this chapel also, followed by the Divine Mercy Chaplet and Rosary. So you're welcome to come to those. Um, as you're here on Friday, you, you, you receive our normal program plus Stations of the Cross, so it's a, a great bonus, I think. Wishing you a blessed stay here in, in Walsingham, and do make sure you go over to the Slipper Chapel and put your petitions uh, in the, in the, before that uh, image of Our Lady there. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radex, Salve Porta, Ex qua mundo lux es dota, Gaude Virgo Gloriosa, Super Omnet Speciosa, Vale o Valde de Et pro nobis Christum exora. Our Lady of Walsingham, Saint Joseph, Saint Felix.
part of the year of prayer in preparation for the Jubilee year of 2025, we will now say the Jubilee prayer. Father in heaven, may the faith you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our brother, and the flame of charity enkindled in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, reawaken in us the blessed hope for the coming of your kingdom. May your grace transform us into tireless cultivators of the seeds of the gospel. May those seeds transform from within both humanity and the whole cosmos in the sure expectation of a new heaven and a new earth, when, with the powers of evil vanquished, your glory will shine eternally. May the grace of the Jubilee reawaken in us pilgrims of hope, a yearning for the treasures of heaven. May that same grace spread the joy and peace of our Redeemer throughout the earth. To you, our God, eternally blessed, be glory and praise forever. Amen.
Phantom ego sacramento, venere luce lui, et antico documento, o voce d'azitui, restet fide supplemento, sensum de Omne delectamentum in se habentem. Oremus. Deus qui nobis sub sacramento, mirabili passinis tuim borbu de quisti, trebimus quesimus, ita nos coplis it sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tui fructum, in nobis iudita essentiamus, qui vives et renias in secula seculorum. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her spouse most chaste. Blessed be St. Joseph, her spouse most chaste. 
Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. now pray the Stations of the Cross. The Stations today are taken from the Way of the Cross which was contained in this devotional book which were originally given in the Matilda Chapel of the Vatican City in the presence of His Holiness Pope Paul VI by the then Carol Cardinal Wojtyla, later Pope John Paul II. Their message of hope deepens our faith and us, encourages us to live it more fully. At the end of each uh, reflection, I will say, Lord Jesus Christ crucified, and please respond with, have mercy on us. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. Pontius Pilate's verdict was pronounced under pressure from the priests and the crowd, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate thought he could disassociate himself from the sentence by washing his hands, just as he had evaded what had been said by Christ, who identified his kingdom with the truth, with witness to the truth. Pilate was trying to remain somehow 
not involved. But the cross to which Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was condemned, like the truth he told about his kingdom, was to strike deep into Pilate's soul. One cannot remain uninvolved on the sidelines. When Jesus, the Son of God, was interrogated about his kingdom, and because of his kingdom was judged guilty by men and condemned to death, his final testimony began, he was about to demonstrate that God loved the world so much. We have this testimony before us, and we know that we are not allowed to wash our hands of it. Lord Jesus Christ crucified, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. second station, Jesus receives the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The execution, the implementation of the sentence is beginning. Christ draws near to the cross, his body atrociously bruised and lacerated, blood trickling down his face from his head crowned with thorns. Ecce homo, in him there is all the truth foretold by the prophets about the Son of Man, the truth predicted by Isaiah about the servant of the Lord. He was wounded for our iniquities. In his wounds there is healing for us. And in him there is also an amazing sequel. Here is what man has done to his God. Pilate says, Ecce homo. Look what you have done to this man. But there seems to be another voice speaking as well. A voice that seems to be saying, Look what you have done in this man to your God. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart of having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified, have, Have mercy, mercy upon us. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls under the weight of the cross. He falls to the ground. Do you think that I could not pray to my Father, who would at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? He does not ask for that. Having accepted the cup from his father's hands, he is resolved to drink it to the end. He wills it no other way. We had hoped, the Emmaus disciples were to say a few days later, if you are the Son of God, the members of the Sanhedrin were to fling at him. He saved others, but he cannot save himself, the crowd was to yell. And he accepts these provocations, which seem to undermine the whole meaning of his mission his teaching, his miracles. He accepts them all, for he is determined not to combat them. He wills it all, to the end, down to the very last detail. He is true to his undertaking. Not my will, but yours be done. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ, crucified, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. The fourth station, Jesus meets his blessed mother. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The, Mary, the mother Mary meets her son along the way of the cross. His cross becomes her cross. His humiliation is her humiliation. The public scorn is on her shoulders. This is the way of the world. This is how it must seem to the people around. And this is how her heart reacts. A sword will pierce your soul. 
the words spoken when Jesus was 40 days old are now coming true. They are reaching complete fulfilment. Although the pain is proper to her, striking deep into her maternal heart, the full truth of this suffering can be expressed only in terms of shared suffering, compassion. The word is part of the mystery. It expresses unity with the suffering son. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have, have mercy, mercy upon us. The fifth station. Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon of Cyrene, called upon to carry the cross, doubtless had no wish to do so. When the condemned man's shoulders became too weak, he lent him his. He moved along very close to Jesus, closer than Mary, closer than John, who, though he, was, though he too was a man, was not called upon to help. They called on him, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus. They summoned him, they compelled him. How long did he go on resenting being forced into this? We do not know. St. Mark simply records the names of the Cyrenian sons, and tradition has it that they were members of the Christian community close to St. Peter. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have mercy upon us. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Tradition has bequeathed us Veronica. Perhaps she is a counterpart to the story of the man from Cyrene. In obedience to the dictates of her heart, she wiped his face. Tradition has it that an imprint of Christ's features remained on the handkerchief she used. Yet, a different significance can be attributed to this detail if it is considered in the light of Christ's words about the final judgment. There will undoubtedly be many who will ask, Lord, when did we ever do these things for you? And Jesus will reply, Whatever you did for the least of these brethren of mine, you did it for me. In fact, the Saviour leaves his imprint on every single act of charity, as on Veronica's handkerchief. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified, have, have mercy, mercy on upon us. us. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am a worm, not a man, scorned by all, the laughing stock of the mob. The words of the psalmist prophet come wholly true in these steep, narrow little streets of Jerusalem in the last hours before the Passover. And we know that those hours before the feast are unnerving, with the streets teeming with people. This is the context 
in which the words of the psalmist are coming true, even though nobody gives this a thought. Certainly it passes unnoticed by those who are displaying their scorn, people for whom this Jesus of Nazareth, who is now falling for the second time, has become a laughing stock. And he wills all this. He wills fulfillment of the prophecy. He falls the second time in accordance with his own will, so that the scriptures may be fulfilled. I am a worm, not a man. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ, crucified. Have mercy upon us. The eighth station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Here is the call to repentance, true repentance. Jesus says to the daughters of Jerusalem who are weeping at the sight of him, Do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. One cannot merely scrape away at the surface of evil. One has to get down to its roots, its causes, the inner truth of the conscience. This is the meaning of the Jesus who carries the cross. He must always be for us the nearest onlooker of all, the one who sees all our actions and is aware of all the verdicts passed on them by our consciences. He even makes us understand that these verdicts have to be carefully thought out, reasonable, objective, for he says, do not weep. But at the same time, bound up with all that this truth contains, he warns us of this because he is the one who carries the cross. Lord, let me know how to live and walk in the truth. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have mercy upon us. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Every station along this way is a milestone of obedience and self-deprivation. We can appreciate the extent of that self-deprivation when we see Jesus falling for the third time under the cross. We can appreciate it when we think carefully who it is who is falling. Who is it who has fallen? Who is Jesus Christ? His nature was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but preferred to deprive himself of it, taking the nature of a slave and becoming as men are, and after taking on human nature, he became humbler still, making himself obedient even unto death, death on a cross. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have mercy upon us. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When Jesus is stripped of his clothes at Golgotha, our thoughts turn once again to his mother. They go back in time to the first days of this body which now, even before the crucifixion, is one mass of wounds. The mystery of the incarnation, the Son of God, 
derives his body from the virgin's womb. Christ's body expresses his love for the Father. Then I said, See, I come to do your will, O God. I always do what is pleasing to him. With every wound, every spasm of pain, every wrenched muscle, every trickle of blood, with all the exhaustion in his arms, all the bruises and lacerations on its back and shoulders, this unclothed body is carrying out the will of both father and son. At this station, we must think of the mother of Christ, because in her womb, before her eyes and at her hands, the body of the Son of God was adored to the full. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have mercy upon us. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. The whole of this man is in a state of utmost tension. Bones, muscles, nerves, every organ, every cell is stretched and strained to breaking point. I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. Therein lies the full reality of the crucifixion. And part of this reality is the terrible tension driving its way into hands, feet, and every bone, driving its way into his entire body, which, nailed like a mere thing to the beams of the cross, is about to be utterly voided in the convulsive agony of death. From the cross he says, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. Jesus, my love, above all things, I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have mercy upon us. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Nailed to the cross, pinned immobile in that terrible position, Jesus invokes the Father. All his invocations bear witness that he is one with the Father. The Father and I are one. Here we have the finest, the most sublime work of the Son in union with the Father. Yes, in union, in the most perfect union possible precisely at the moment when he cries, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those outstretched arms embrace all humanity and all the world. Here is the man. Here is God himself. In him we live and move and have our being. In him, in those arms outstretched along the traverse, transverse beam of the cross, the mystery of redemption. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ, crucified. Have mercy upon us. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
when the body is taken down from the cross and laid in the mother's arms. In our mind's eye, we glimpse again the moment when Mary accepted the message brought by the angel Gabriel. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son whom you will call Jesus. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and his reign will never end. All that Mary said was, let it all happen to me as you have said, as though even then she had wanted to express what she is undergoing now. Inseparable from this mystery is the extraordinary promise formulated by Simeon during the presentation of Jesus in the temple, a sword will pierce your heart so that the thoughts of many hearts may be laid bare. Once again, Jesus is in her arms as he was in the stable in Bethlehem. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I may love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have mercy upon us. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. From the moment when man, because of sin, was banished from the tree of life, the earth became a burial ground. For every human being there is a tomb, a vast planet of tombs. Close to Calvary there was a tomb belonging to Joseph of Arimathea. In it, with Joseph's consent, the body of Jesus was placed after being taken down from the cross. They laid it there in haste, in order that the burial might be completed before the feast of Passover, which began at sunset. In one of the innumerable tombs, scattered all over the continents of this planet of ours, the Son of God, the man Jesus Christ, conquered death with death. All who look to the tomb of Jesus Christ live in resurrection hope. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended thee. Never permit me to separate myself from thee again. Grant that I love thee always, and then do with me what thou wilt. Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Have mercy upon us. say in our Father, a Hail Mary and a glory be for the Holy Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. now uh, continue with our afternoon devotions with the recitation of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, 
and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life and fathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. Amen. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. I trust, trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. I trust, trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. I, I trust, trust in, in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity, of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Jesus, I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Jesus, I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Saint Faustina, Pray for us. Saint John Paul II. Pray for us. We now pray the mysteries of the Holy Rosary, the sorrowful mysteries. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Pray for the Pope, the Church, and for peace in our world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive, forgive us our sins, save, save us from the fires of hell. Lead and lead all souls to heaven, especially, especially those who have most need of thy mercy. The first sorrowful mystery, the agony in the garden. And his sweat became as drops of blood running down upon the ground. And rising from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour <coughs> of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins, sins, save, save us, us from, from the fires of hell, lead, lead, all, lead all souls, souls to, heaven, to heaven, especially, especially those of most need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. Pilate then took Jesus and had him scourged. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive, forgive us our, our sins. sins. Save, Save us, us from, from the fires, fires of hell. hell. Lead, all Lead all souls, souls to, heaven, to heaven, especially, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning with thorns. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet cloak, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed into his right hand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our sins, sins save, save us from, from the fires, fires of, hell. of hell, lead, lead all, all souls, souls to, heaven, to heaven, especially, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery, the carrying of the cross. And bearing the cross on himself, he went forth to the place called the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our sins, sins. save, save us, from us from the fires of hell, of hell. Lead, lead all souls, souls to, heaven, to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. 
Having said this, he expired. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins, sins. save, save us, from us from the fires, fires of hell. Of hell. Lead, Lead all, all souls, souls to, to heaven, heaven, especially, especially those, those in most need, need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy. mercy. Hail, Hail our life, our, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, the Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries, in the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may both imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.